Hey, konnichiwa mine san, it's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. Gray and Bobby Gillespie from Primal Scream. Anyway, how are you doing? I hope you're good. I hope you're Genki. Um, had a busy weekend, had a, a European buddy over, jiu-jitsu buddy, so was busy um, doing jiu-jitsu stuff and like entertaining and things, so couldn't do any videos over the weekend, but here we are with my picks for this week of new comics and also some recommends, some shout outs from last week. I didn't manage to get a review out, but I gotta say, after rereading it, I do recommend Absolute Batman issue one by Scott Snyder and Nick Nodragoda. Yeah, definitely worth a look, worth a read. It's, um, of course, it's an Elseworld style story, so it's something very different that you're looking for. Um, as you know, I did a review already of Batman and Robin last week. Though I really enjoyed that. It's a proper like Batman Robin story. Oh my God, got like a mosquito bite. It just got really itchy suddenly. But yeah, this this kind of it pulled me back in after reading it. But it did take a reread to really get it. And I got to say, I came out of the this issue. My favorite character was Alfred. So there we go. What else did we have? We also had another Batman title, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, The Kryptonian Age. This was issue, f oh, are we on five or six? Oh my God, I can't quite see it. It's so small. But yeah, again, I think this issue is one of the best ones of this series. Yeah, really, really good. Great, great world building. Great character work by Andy Diggle. Love the art by Leandro Fernandez. And yeah, just, um, just give it a shot. Have a look at this. There's a lot going on in this. A really cool version of Luther, and it's bringing in some of the different DC heroes in very intriguing ways. We also finally get to see, possibly, is it Superman, the sheriff of Smallville there on the cover? So yeah, do check this out if you're not reading it. It is, it is really, really good. And one more to shout out from last week. This is one from Marvel. This one surprised me. It's uh, The Sentinels, issue one, written by Alex Pagnadal. Is it Alec? Alex Pagnadal, and it's got art by... Justin Mason, I want to say Jason then, Jason Mason because it rhymes, but yeah, let me just let me double check. Yes, Justin Mason, Alex Pagnadel. So, as I say, I was kind of surprised because um, I didn't know what to expect with this. Uh, before it came out, before, well, when the, the titles were all announced, people were kind of like, mm, scratching their head at this, the Sentinels, it's not going to last long, is it? Probably, but... There was something about it that I enjoyed, and I liked the, the. I was reading a bit of an interview with Alec about it, Alex about it, and he was talking about Robocop vibes to it. So that kind of, yeah. And when you read it, you'll get, you'll get an idea why. So, yeah, maybe have a look, see what you think. I don't know. The art was, um, shall we say, it's a little bit different. Look at the covers as I, as I speak. That's the same, isn't it? Same artist on the cover, so. Yeah, not sometimes not sure about the the characters' faces. Yeah, and these are all new characters mostly, so trying to get to know them. But it did enough to, um, to really you know, really interest me. And yeah, I want to try issue two. So there we go. Right. So that's three from last week. That's enough of that. Let's get on with Gray's hot picks for this week. It will be Wednesday, October the sixteenth. Okay. Please keep watching. Here we go. Starting with DC and one of the striking covers of this week. We got Batman Full Moon issue one, written by Rodney Barnes with art by Stephen or Steven Subic. He did that Riddler year one, he did the art on there. So yeah, looking forward to this. Let's see what it's all about. Hey, come on, it's just good timing, isn't it? For Halloween. 5 99 by the way, 32 pages and a glow in the dark cover. An ancient and supernatural force stalks the streets of Gotham City. A lichen so powerful it'll defy Batman's most trusted resources. His brilliant mind and extensive gadgetry. But are Batman's physical strength and resilience alone enough to put the creature down for good? Or will this fight strip him down to his very bones? Even powerful magical allies like Zatanna caution that Bruce might not walk away from this one unscathed. So it's Black Label and so far there are three books listed, issue 1, 2 and 3, October, November, December. Let's see, see if it comes out regularly. Like there are people out there still waiting for Gargoyle of Gotham. I've forgotten all about that. And next up we have Batman and Robin, year 1, issue 1. Written by Mark Wade with story, art, letters by Chris Samney. Three ninety nine for this, a rare three ninety nine book from DC. While Bruce Wayne adjusts to the realities of adopting orphan Dick Grayson, a mysterious new crime boss called The General has come to Gotham to claim the city by disrupting and destroying its other mobs. 
But what is connection to Two-Face? So it's a Batman and Dick Grayson Robin story. Looks like it's set in the past. Obviously, yeah, with the year one title. Um, mm, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not sure about this one, but I want to give it a try. And yet another Batman book. That's right. Well, we're starting on a theme here, aren't we? Batman Superman World's Finest Issue 32. Eclipso's reign of terror rages on. Even the combined might of the Man of Steel and the Dark Knight detective cannot overcome the reincarnation of the literal wrath of God. So again, this is Mark Wade, and it's got art by Adrian Gutierrez. And another 399 book, by the way. And possibly a bit of a surprise edition next for me because I've not really been reading Green Lantern, the main book, but I did, did enjoy the um, Green Lantern War Journal. Oh my God, I forgot what it was called then. So, um, did you read the special from last week? Because this kind of, I think, continues the story from there. This is Jeremy Adams on writing duties. Germanico, Germanico from on art. The seeds of war have been sown and now a massive battle rages across the galaxy. Hal Jordan, John Stewart and Guy Gardner must race to unlock the mystery of the Dark Star Resurrection. What it means for their beloved friend Kilowog and just how to battle an entire planet. The red rage of Mogo rains down on our heroes as the civil core heats up. It says here Legacy Issue 583. Wow, didn't know there'd been that many. 499 for this, 32 pages. Yeah, I say I, I enjoyed the um the kind of special from last week and I like cosmic stories, so I want to give Green Light in a shot. How about you? Have you been reading this? If so, please let me know. Like what do you think of Jeremy Adams' run? And moving on to Marvel Comics, the big release is Ultimate Spider-Man issue 10, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by David Messina. J. Jonah Jemison, Ben Parker, and the Green Goblin collide. It says here that the fan favourite, apparently, duo, Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson, take centre stage in this investigative mystery issue. So this sounds like very little Spider-Man, doesn't it? But in this world of shadows and secrets, every unturned rock leads to danger, and they'll soon have to decide which is the greater challenge, uncovering secrets or keeping them. 499, 28 pages. Yeah, I don't know about you, I'm kind of, I'm, what's the word, I'm on the fence about Ultimate Spider-Man. Last few issues, uh, they've been okay, it's, I don't know, kind of, kind of got a bit boring. So we'll see, see what we think. What do you think? Again, do let me know. And we have a new issue of Uncanny X-Men, it's issue 4, written by Gail Simone, art by David Marquez. With one X-Men down and hell coming for the rest, Rogue finds herself alone against a power of darkness she is completely unprepared for. No backup, no lifeline and no way out. Was that a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie? And as she fights alone, a secret of the new recruits is revealed. Is one of them the endling that will destroy all mutant kind? A rather dark looking cover there, isn't it? What do you think? In the darkness waits Sarah Gaunt, it says there. Oh my god, is that Gambit's gravestone there? We also have Wolverine issue 2, the new series, number 2 comes out, written by Saladin Ahmed, or is it Ahmed? Martin Cocolo, or Cocholo on art, Kobe Grayman, can't pronounce any names. Where goes the Wendigo? Who stalks Wolverine in the Canadian North? And what mysterious designs does the Wendigo have on the best there is? Logan just wants to be left alone. I know that feeling. But a war on two fronts will evolve with an unexpected turn. Don't miss the debut of the all-new Wendigo, as a secret it hides will shape Wolverine's mission. 499, 28 pages, legacy number 394. Yeah, I really enjoyed the first issue, so looking forward to this. And I've got to shout out this. It's got one of the best variant covers of the week. A Godzilla variant by, I think it's pronounced, Roger Antonio. It could be Roger. Roger Antonio. Look at that. I just love the, the atomic breath. And all you can see is Paul Wolverine's skeleton. And my final choice from Marvel Comics this week is the completely bonkers Spider-Man Reign 2, issue 4. Written and drawn by Carrie Andrews. 4 99 for 32 pages. Ravaged by age, traumatised and now time-tossed, Peter Parker can barely function. Miles Morales doesn't particularly care if taking down his old friend is what is needed to save the pity. The pity? Save your pity, fool. To save the city and possibly all of existence. 
I know, I know a lot of people kind of really don't like this. There's something about it that just works for me. I, I love the madness of it, the craziness. Just don't know what you're going to get in each issue. And I've got to say, I love Carrie Andrews' um, 90s style art. Really, really do. Look at this cover. Come on. How can you turn this down? Moving on to Indies, and we have from Image Comics, Falling in Love on the Path to Hell, issue 5. Written by Jerry Duggan, art by Gary Brown. If you're not reading this, please give it a shot. It's a good time to jump on. New story arc here with issue 5. I'm just having a great time with it. I like it. It's dark. It's creepy. It pushes the limits a little bit at times. Really cool art style. It's got a really fantastic character of a female samurai and like an old west cowboy. Yeah, a gunslinger. Come on. As it says here in the synopsis, um, your new favourite ongoing begins its second arc. The lovers have met and the sparks of love are igniting. As Sammy and McCraith are fighting their feelings for each other, they're also fighting the warrior cult they've spurned and some new hidden forest enemies. Okay, it says at the end of the synopsis, this series is stabby, shooty and horny and you know you'll need it. Hey, sounds good to me. Come on, give it a shot. Also, it's got my name on the cover if you look closely. Grey! Also from Image, we have Ultra Mega, issue 6. Writer-artist James Harron, colours by Dave Stewart. This has um, been recommended to me by a couple of people who are often like watching my, my live streams or in the comments on my comic book reviews. So thanks for the recommendation. I'm going to give it a shot on your, uh, on, you know, your say. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a new story arc. It sounds like I'm kind of jumping in in the middle. I think there was a bit of a hiatus before last issue, if I'm right, issue five. So this is issue six. But the one thing that kind of, and uh, that's much puts me off. If I could get a physical copy, I wouldn't mind so much. But it's seven ninety nine, eight dollars for this. I mean, I guess it's oversized, but yeah. Anyway, it's been recommended. So very very brief synopsis. All it says is, from beyond the cosmos, a terrifying new enemy emerges. Has any ultra mega faced a threat like this? But first, Noah will train his massive fists on a city gone kaiju crazy. Anyone out there reading this? An image again with Rat City issue 7, written by Erica Schultz, art by Zé Carlos, only two ninety nine. But I've got to say, after last issue, I'm close to dropping this. This, is, this issue better work. I, you know, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but I want this issue to pull me in. It says here, Quinlan has been infected by Peter's Nanites. They are suffering from horrific visions of heaven and hell, reliving battles between angels and demons. Their mind can only take so much before it breaks. Sounds pretty good to me. I like a bit of, you know, heaven and hell and angel and demon battles. Let's see if Erica Schultz can grab me and pull me back in. Pull me back in. And we have Dark Horse Comics next with Prodigy Slaves of Mars Issue 3. Written by Mark Miller, art by Stefano Landini. I'm really enjoying this, this miniseries. It's 4 99 by the way, 32 pages. Edison Crane and his older, smarter brother team up to find out who murdered their father in a journey that takes them to a secret colony on the surface of Mars. And a never-to-be-forgotten fight at the White House Press Association dinner. Wow. Don't miss it. Yeah, I say it's good. Pretty cool cover there. I like it. It's kind of weird, but yeah. So, are you reading this? Have you read the uh, earlier Prodigy series? I'm liking the connection to Mars. It's been the news a lot of that, hasn't it, at the moment? With Musk and his, um, what's he call it? Spaceship. God, I forgot the name. Star Trekking. Not that one. And also from Dark Horse and Mark Miller, two releases the same week. It is... Jupiter's Legacy, the finale, issue one. Written by Mark Miller, art by Tommy Lee Edwards. Three ninety nine for this. The superheroes have been trapped and murdered on an alien world, while the enemies of Earth, who have been watching our planet with envious eyes, launch their invasion now there's no one to protect it. The return of Mark Miller and Frank Quietly's series for an epic and shocking finale. I've actually seen a preview uh, copy of this and yeah, look at the cover. That's the art style. It's really cool. It's painted, colourful art. I'm not really sure about the story because I've not read um, the earlier Jupiter's Legacy. But yeah, I'm going to give it a reread and see what I think. Lots of action, I'll say that. And yeah, very, very colourful. Colourful? Grey? What are you talking about? Imagine that. Colours in a comic book. Amazing. Just two more to go, two kind of wild cards at the end here. This is from Dark Horse 
Where Monsters Lie, cul-de-sac issue one. Now it's the writer here, Kyle Starks, that has got me interested in this. It says there's art by Piotr, Piotr Kowalski, or Peter, Peter Kowalski. Kowalski, vanishing point. 399, 32 pages. The hit meta horror comedy by Eisner nominated writer Kyle Starks returns just in time for Halloween. Now, I didn't read the first miniseries, but as I say, it's, um, I've heard good things about it, so I want to give this a shot. Come join us, friends, for it's time to visit another gated community for slashers and meet a new cast of horrible monsters as we return to the world of where monsters lie. Connor Hayes, final girl turned apex monster hunter, has been brought to Site B and expected to be a good little killer. But will he cooperate? And what sort of bone-tingling secrets inhabit this new horror hamlet? Yeah, looking forward to this. Hopefully it's, it's going to be fun and silly and Halloween-y. And my last pick of the week and my favourite cover, it has to be of the week, look at this. It is from Titan Books, Minky Woodcock, The Girl Called Cthulhu, Issue 1. From Hardcase Crime, the publisher of the hit series Gun Honey, the plucky detective returns with an occult horror twist. Sensational artist, author and playwright Cynthia von Buhler, or is it Buhler, melds her glorious illustrations with the eldritch elements of H.P. Lovecraft and Alistair Crowley. Inspired by a true World War II maritime operation, shocking satanic events, monstrous men and one salacious sea creature, this third series tells a tale of Minky's encounter with legendary horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. Ooh, old H.P., Creator of the dreaded Cthulhu. 399, 32 pages. Some cracking variant covers on this. Yeah, looking, uh, shall we say, looking exciting. Love the cover. And I'm always up for a bit of uh, Cthulhu-based horror. And yeah, hey, there's a Crowley in here. Who knew? Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this far. If you're still here, you absolutely rock and roll. Okay, as a shout out for an interesting cover that caught my eye, it's the Japanese script version of Falling in Love on the Path to Hell, issue five. This is actually, um, it says second printing variant, you know, so it hasn't even come out yet. So if there is a second printing, which I guess there will be, they're going to do this version with the Japanese kanji for the title. What do you think though of Frank Miller's cover? Yeah, interesting. There is actually um, an English version of it, which will be one of the variant covers of the, you know, the main issue. So just, uh, I like this title in kanji. Good to see that. Okay, as always, thanks a lot for watching and do drop comments. Let me know what your picks are for this week and I hope to see you in a future video. Matane. Stinking dead end job. Hello, sweetheart. There's my gal. <laughs> <laughs>